Welcome to our review on stem cells. First thing we need to know, what is a stem cell? So when we're talking about stem cells, we're talking about undifferentiated cells. So these are ones that haven't become specialized. Now, stem cells can actually divide by mitosis and then they can differentiate into any type of specialized cell. So this is kind of our building block, if you like, to make all the different types of cell within the body. And there are two types of our stem cells. We have adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells. The first type of stem cell we're going to look at are the embryonic stem cells. Now, hopefully a little bit of common sense and looking at that name tells you they come from embryos. They will be able to divide by mitosis and then they can differentiate into all cell types. So I've given you little pictures at the bottom there of some of these stem cells in that process of mitosis. The second type of stem cell, the adult stem cells. Now, these are ones that you will find in your body. So you'll find them in things like brain, bone marrow, skin, liver. All of those regions of your body have these adult stem cells present. The key difference between adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells is the number of cell types they can differentiate into. So while those embryonic stem cells could differentiate into all cell types, our adult stem cells can only differentiate into some cell types. Now, these ones are particularly used to repair damage so that if you obviously suffer damage to your liver, then there are those stem cells which can then repair themselves there. If we now think about plants, then there's a massive difference between animals and plants in that animals will only grow for a certain proportion of their life, whereas plants continue to grow throughout their entire lives in certain regions. Now, the areas of the plant that are capable of growth are what's called meristems. Now, these ones we'll find in three key areas, which are the root tips, the shoot tips and the buds. So we'll find the merry stems in the root tips, the shoot tips and the buds. And when we're looking at these merry stem cells, they've got four key things you need to remember. First, they're very small. Secondly, they've got these very thin walls. They've only got small vacuoles and there are no chloroplasts present. So make sure that you do remember that difference in the terminology. When we're talking about animals, it's stem cells. When we're talking about plants, it's merry stem cells. So why do we care about stem cells? This is one of those areas where there's a lot of research going on at the moment, and it's actually one of those areas of science that could be incredibly game changing. So what we've got there are just a few different headlines that I found online about stem cells and their potential uses. So it could be the fact that we are able to reverse paralysis, as you can see in the top left there. It could be that we can actually do some work with arthritis or diabetes. So there's a whole range of things that we might be able to use stem cells for in the future. And that's why there's so much research going on with them at the moment. So when we're thinking about all of those potential uses, and you can see there's just some on this slide here then why would people have a problem with this? Why would there be any controversy around this actual use of something that could be so revolutionary in our lives? And the simple answer for that generally comes from the bit in the top right there, that the embryonic stem cells we tend to use are coming from four or five day old human embryos. Now, obviously there are some people who have a bit of an issue with the fact we are using human embryos for this. Obviously, there's that whole argument about that could have been a human life, etc. It might go against religious beliefs. The reality is that the vast majority of these embryos that we're using for our stem cell research actually are spares from IVF treatment. So, yes, OK, potentially they could have become a baby or because obviously they were the spares left over from IVF, they could have just been thrown away. And obviously those cells, as we've said, could potentially be used to reverse paralysis. So there's the argument there about what's actually the best thing to do in this situation. Is it to use those embryos for this actual research where we could have massive life-changing results? Or 
are obviously the other people's viewpoints and therefore certain religious viewpoints correct that because they could have been human life, we shouldn't use them. And the reality is that there is no right or wrong answer to that because it's an individual opinion. They could ask you to obviously give two sides of an argument there. So just try to put yourself in other people's shoes. Whenever you're asked to give reasons why sort of developments in science are a little bit stunted or they have these delays, religion is always a really good answer to go with there because a lot of times that is what does hold people back for a short period of time. So make sure that at the end of this review you do know what the different types of stem cells are both in plants and in animals and what we could potentially use them for as well as the reasons why people may not agree with it.